Hey, what's going on everyone? In today's video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you some hidden features I bet you didn't know you could do with your iPhone. Let's get started. Let's start off with the safety features. If you're in a situation where somebody's forcing you to unlock your phone with Face ID or something like that, or you just want to disable Face ID in general, by tapping the power button five times, this will actually quickly bring you to the Mercy SOS screen, but as soon as you hit cancel, you will also notice that Face ID is now disabled and won't come back online until you unlock it with the pin code to unlock your device. A nice hidden trick right there. And since we're still on the subject of Face ID, if you actually go into your settings and go into Face ID and passcode, if you scroll down, you can actually set an alternative appearance. So if Face ID isn't reading you properly if you're wearing a hat or glasses, you can set up this alternative appearance. It will scan your face or you can allow somebody else to have access to your iPhone this way so you have two different face id recognitions on one device so your spouse or somebody can easily get have access to your smartphone now other cool hidden features can be found in the clock app if you're the type of person that likes to listen to music or play video while you're falling asleep or something like that if you actually go on a clock app and on the very bottom where it says timer let's say you just want audio to play for an hour and then at the very bottom when it says end time end select top, stop playing tap set and now start that timer and play whatever music or audio that you're listening to and past the hour it will automatically stop so if you're passed out within an hour your phone is just not playing music or sound and it's not draining its battery now in addition to that yes the notch if you actually have the dynamic island i should say you can actually like see the stats and stuff like that of your timer right here well, maybe i'll cover more about those hidden features in a little bit but i did a whole dedicated video right over there in case you're curious what capability the dynamic island can do but this video we're just applying all iphones in general that have some type of notch but now let's go ahead and exit off of this now if you're a user like me who we'll also utilize the spotlight search a lot when it comes to locating apps that's just one of the cool things that the spotlight search can do it could do a lot more one of which is but it could also easily do math. So instead of launching the calculator app, I personally prefer using the spotlight search. And you can even track flights here. So if you have flight numbers, you can just import it right here. And now when taking a screenshot, we should already be familiar with this UI. You can like highlight certain things, uh, get a ruler. But on the color, you could actually select like smaller detail and colors. Like you got the hue control right here to actually customize the hex color, actual hex color number if you have one in Pacific in uh, in mind and you like to pre-save. So you actually really customize the little highlighter to your own personal preference. But in addition to that, let's say for example, you just want to copy this screenshot, you don't want to go to your camera roll. You select copy and delete right here. So it doesn't actually go to your camera roll, you can paste it, whatever. So those are those fake screenshots you want to send to somebody else in case you're guiding them through a tutorial or something. But another tool that the screenshot can be extremely helpful is whenever you have to take a screenshot on, like, say, say, Safari. When you take a screenshot on Safari, if you actually click on it, you have the capability to switch to full page. And this will literally take a whole screenshot of that web browser. And you can save it to your camera roll or send it to somebody else that way. Or you can delete it if you don't need it. You just need to make a copy or save as a PDF file to your files. You have that capability. So a lot of people don't know about that full page capability. Now, since we're in the subject of web browser, a uh, recent update allows you to actually change the default web browser from Safari to Google if you like. So you have full freedom to do so. So you just going into your settings, scroll down a third party web browser of choice you like to select. So in our case, we're selecting Chrome. And here you'll see a uh, default browser app. You can actually check mark it right there. So now our default web browser is Google Chrome. So if you'd like to figure out how to enable this reachability, this basically allows you to basically just bring the top portion of the display all the way down to your fingertips. So you don't have to, you don't have to actually like long reach to like have access to your control center as you just witnessed me doing this. If you'd like to enable this, which I always had enabled ever since like the iPhone 10 days, uh, you could easily do so. All you have to do is just go into your settings and go into accessibility. And from here, tap on touch, and this is where you guys would go ahead and go in and enable reachability. And now all you gotta do is slide down a little white block line right down here, and this will bring up your screen. You can tap the up arrow to make it go back up, or you can actually swipe up from the home page, the home button, this bar once more to 
take it back to its normal size. Super helpful in those situations where you just cannot have two hands on your phone at the same time. Now, my layout is uh, kind of goofy. It's like all over the place. Yes, we should all be familiar by tapping and holding on the little lines down here. It allows you to quickly go from one page to the other. But if you long press and you enter a wiggle mode, if you have like a page filled with like apps you just don't want others to see, you can always just uncheck it, tap done, and now that app list is technically hidden. So that's a clever way to hide stuff if you really want to. Now, if you have a delicate photo and you just want to hide, we should all be familiar with the hidden capability. You just tap here, hidden, but it's not technically hidden because it's still going to be located in the quote unquote named hidden folder. You can actually hide this if you actually go into your settings, go down where it says show hidden album. When this is enabled, it will show it. If you disable it, if you go back, it's gone. And thanks to your recent update, if you need to have access to the hidden album, it will actually ask for face ID or your passcode to have access to it. It's not going to guarantee this access to just anyone. And then don't forget, other ways to save up clutter is to just stack widgets. Get stack has like up to five and just swap and switch between different widgets right here. This is cool, and you can also customize it if you want it to be random if you like. Now, the next hidden feature that's usually typically forgotten is the capability to quickly scroll all the way to the very top portion of the display or what page you're on, as an example. If you're all the way at the very bottom, instead of scrolling all the way up, you can technically tap on the little scroll icon right here on the side and quickly just go up. That's another clever way to quickly go to the top portion of the display. Or you can actually tap the notch or this general area on the upper screen. This will automatically take you to the very top. Nice shortcut right here. Now let's go ahead and talk about some uh, useful tips that you can find on the camera app. One of which is whenever you're taking a selfie. So whenever you take a selfie, you may have noticed sometimes it doesn't actually look like how it actually was showing you in the viewfinder. If you like to flip this, there's a setting you can actually go in, go ahead and enable to actually have it so it actually looks like how you how it looked like when it was in the viewfinder. So all you gotta do is just go into your settings and go into the camera app and just select mirror front camera. Now, when this is enabled and you take the shot again, it actually will take that shot like how it looked like. This feature is typically disabled by default. Not sure why, but now you are informed how to correct that. Aside from that, there you guys have it. There's a lot of other hidden features you can do with the iPhone, but those are the ones that I primarily use day to day. And I've seen a lot of people just forget. So if this was a nice refresher, you know what to do. Leave this video a like, please. I appreciate those. And if you'd like to watch more, check out this video over here where I highlight all my favorite accessories for the iPhone. And then that video over there, that's the video YouTube is recommending specifically for you. Thanks a lot for watching. Subscribe, and I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.